a big rock in a second, but you'll be alright. Okay, I'll move in a sec. The military, they, they really like the idea of off-road mobility. I mean, getting off of the road so they're not predictable where they go, that's a good thing. Yep. And, and so that, from their ability to defend and, and avoid uh, conflict, that's a, that's a great thing. So that's the same kind of thing that we want for an off-road vehicle in terms of its off-road capability. But if you think about electric drives, I mean, when the first electric drives came out and they were out in these you know, parking lots, we had to worry about pedestrians not hearing the vehicle as it very snuck quiet. up on them. They're very quiet. And so that's actually a very desirable thing for the military. They don't want to be detected. So a vehicle that can go out and operate in a very stealthy way because it's quiet operating, that's a good thing. But it's also a good thing if you think about it because sometimes they just want to stop and not be detected. They don't want a lot of heat. They don't want exhaust smell. They don't want smoke. They don't want all those things. A fuel cell has none of it. A fuel cell has no smoke other than some water vapor, no odor. Um, we're very quiet. And the fact that we have this highly capable electric drive system, we can also take advantage of its ability to export power. So we become a mobile generator. Uh, the two come together into the fuel cell stack. There's, this is the stack here, about 300 cells. And then around the stack is what we call the balance of plant. There's a compressor, injector, power electronics, humidifier, all devices that assist in delivering a combination of the hydrogen and the oxygen to the stack where there's an electrochemical reaction that pr produces electric power which in turn powers the vehicle or drives the vehicle down the road. So that's at a very high level, that's how a, a fuel cell system or fuel cell engine works to power an automobile or power other devices as well. It's kind of a misconception about hydrogen, you know, there, it's, it's much different than liquid fuels. You know, liquid fuels, if you penetrate the tank in any type of, you know, um, large event. Um, it can pool. Um, you know, obviously gasoline fumes are very flammable, whereas hydrogen, it diffuses very rapidly into the atmosphere. Um, so there's some benefits and advantages to hydrogen compared to a traditional liquid fuel. This is the, the nozzle. fueling nozzle for hydrogen. Um, it looks very similar to a, you know, your traditional gas. There actually is a, a data link between the refueling station and the nozzle and the vehicle itself, so they kind of communicate two ways with each other. Um, there are hydrogen sensors exterior to it to make sure that there is, is a, a good seal and a good leak. Um, refueling time is about three minutes, so very comparable to a liquid fuel type system. Um, and as you can see, you know, it's 
your traditional type of uh, Doesn't take any nozzle. like expertise. No, absolutely not. Um, it's very simple to operate, uh, which is another benefit of it. Um, it's much faster than electric recharging, uh, so it's kind of a benefit. Cruise control. I bet you even have uh, serious uh, XM radio if you wanted it to. And then over here, this is interesting, you've got a, both a front and a back locker, and the Colorado doesn't, of course, have the, let me show you. The Colorado doesn't have the uh, front locking diff, but apparently uh, the Colorado ZH2, if I'm going by these controls, has a, a front locking diff. Uh, tow haul mode, front locking diff, rear locking diff, turn the trash control, and a light. So I don't know how many of these uh, buttons are actually functional, but uh, they look like they're, uh, they're ready to be used. So I guess the... Here you can see some of the truck's capabilities. 0 to 60 in 5.4 seconds, 0 to 30 in 4.6, turning radius 24.2. It's not exactly fast, uh, but then again, uh, this is a test mule. And then of course, if you look over here, you've got the curb weight, 6,038 pounds. Uh, basically, it's a standard Colorado chassis somewhere between the short and the long cab uh, and you can see the departure and uh, approach angles uh, they're really good front overhang 35 inches rear overhang 42 uh, and then of course the power is 25 kilowatts um, and then if we go down here you can kind of see the evolution of gm's fuel cells they've been doing it a while and fuel cells have been around a long time in fact we went to the moon with fuel cells but they were massive and expensive uh, and really not ready for prime time. For off-road mobility, this vehicle kind of accentuates all of that, and then it leverages that fuel cell technology so that we can get a very good dynamic running vehicle that does all these things that I talked to you about. Efficient, it refuels in about three minutes. You can get, um, I mean, this vehicle's actually not going to have the full range capability. It's gonna have a closer to 200 miles range, but you can have a 300, 400 mile range vehicle with a fuel cell uh, by putting hydrogen on board. So that's one of the nice advantages.